Shout out to once again the brother on the dating rights spelled with a W YouTube channel. This video right here, man, I kid y'all not, man. <laughs> this is gonna be a fun one. And the reason why these women are on desperation stage. They are at, in, at the stage of desperation to get you men. They are so desperate that they are officially going to, to meetup events, professional meetup events. Women are showing up there trying to get to you guys or any other convention motive. Like if Tony Robbins is speaking, these sisters are showing up to Tony Robbins events trying to get you guys. They realize that Pookie's and Ray Ray, this, this is the irony. This is the irony of it. The same men that they laughed at in high school. You, you one third nerd. I, why would I be with you? I want me somebody from the football team. The same women that ignored you in college. Same ones. Same ones that had something to say and cheated on you while you was in the military. I know that heifer. I know who you're talking about. I know her. Are the same ones that are now paying eight, nine, sometimes even fifteen hundred dollars to get into these conventions to get next to you, so they could beat up at the meetups. So, like the same ladies that will show up to the Black Manosphere Conclave just to meet up with black men. I kid you not. I kid you not. These women are serious. Serious. Guys, these women are becoming more calculated when it comes to their desperate hunt of looking to secure a husband. I'm your Uber driver. Get in. I didn't order an Uber. We've got one now. I'm good, bro. Oh my fucking god! Get the hell in! Tell your friends to pull up. Well, how do we feel about women flying out to Afrotech with the purpose of looking for husbands? Because apparently the men are in on it. Men know that women are doing that. Oh, yeah, they're, so, no, they're aware. Oh, um, no, nah, I talked to some of the bros. They said, bro, it's whole apocalypse out here. <laughs> the effectiveness and the efficiency of these hunters is crazy. And, you know, they're just waiting for what's coming to them. You know, pick the economy and it's looking good out here to be a, a tech guy. You know, there's a lot she is so glad that she decided to decenter male the attention for males in her life. Afro tech is not cheap, right? Afro before we go any further, before we go any further, they're talking about the event called Afro Tech. They're talking about that event. Okay, because of the event Afro Tech, uh, a lot of women are discovering tech guys. Yes, the Theo Wafts. All you cybersecurity guys, all you guys that do work online, all you video editors, all you guys that do anything that has to do with computers, all you guys that are social media uh, influencers and so forth. If you work on a computer and you are a brother and you go to Afrotech with some of the, the best events for this genre or, or part of this uh, business sector is a lot of. And I mean, a lot of women are actually going down there right now in order to get to you guys. Afrotech is such a special place because when you give people the power and the opportunity to continue to grow, to build community, they thrive. Afrotech actively dispels any beliefs that the talent isn't there. The talent is there and actually they're here attending this conference. The Afrotech community is my community. It's like creating a whole new environment and space for black excellence. This is the new dating strategy, all right? I need you to look up professional organizations. This is incredibly important work. So if you're not going to listen to Raquel, then I need you to listen to me. Hi, I'm Courtney. I'm the host of a podcast called With Love and Butter, a chef's podcast on dating and relationships and all the food and drinks that get us through it. I'm also a quite chronically single girly for the last two years until like last November, at which point I met my partner at Afrotech, the largest black tech conference, period. 
Okay, so Afrotech, for some context, is the largest gathering of black tech minds, and you don't have to be black in order to come. Um, but you know, the the theming, the, the the information, the panels, and all of those things are centered around a black um, and BIPOC experience. Um, and it is in Austin, Texas. And this year, it's being hosted in Austin, Texas, from November first through the fifth. And um, it's going to be wonderful. Just a big consortium of of black excellence and genius and and technological innovation, all the things, right? It's going to be a wonderful time. Anyway, this is where I met my partner last year. And I went to this conference with two very specific goals. One, I wasn't looking for a job last year because I was a marketing director for a tech app, um, for an app in the food world, but tech still, whatever. Um, and I'm not anymore. I've since pivoted full-time into content creation and entrepreneurship, but that's neither here nor there. I went there for the vibe and I went there to meet a husband. That's why I went, okay? For those of you who, you know, were following me around this time last year, I made a video that said, I'm leaving here with something. I'm from around the way. I'm leaving here with something. And I did. And I did. If you're wondering why there's an echo in here, it's because I'm shooting this from the brand new townhome of me and that man. All right? Yeah. We are in love, okay? I was running around for the two years prior, just a single little duckling, just a single little sad little, just confused, really figuring it out, kept accidentally falling into these very strange situationships. You know what I mean? Just like a lot was going on. It was giving, everybody's falling in love and I'm falling behind. You know what I mean? That's what it gave. It's not giving that no more, bitch. And it's because I took my black ass to Afrotech. And they're paying up to $800 a ticket not because they're into the world of tech, but they're trying to get into the meetup and greet ups. And the meetup and greet up, greet up, the meet and greet events are so, uh, uh, have so many people there that now what's going on is that they are actually just coming for that event alone. It's starting to grow its, its own following, not Afrotech itself, but the Afrotech meetup and greet. So let's get started and watch these women in their desperation. Afrotech apparently is eight hundred dollars for a ticket, correct? Like, Hi. You aren't familiar with Afrotech? Afrotech is a conference that is essentially supposed to be like an amazing networking experience for Black people in tech to network, to catch vibes, um, to learn, to educate themselves, and you know to honestly be in the midst. And then apparently, it's also a great place for recruiters to recruit for. Tech jobs. The like, new dynamic that has arisen is a result of the TikTok girlies. Because TikTok thanks, girlies came online to give girls tips. They're like, yo, like if you guys want these husbands, like there's a new hub, like there's a new hive. And then they're like, yeah, the tech guys are all there. And then, you know, they're basically chilling out in these suites and hunting these guys down. And, and like he just said, it all started through TikTok that women were going on TikTok telling other women, girl, you need if you're looking for a husband, you need to go to Afrotech. You need to go to where the men are. And so now these women feel like if I go to Afrotech, I got a chance of getting the quality men. These six figure Theo Waff men. Oh, yeah, they're out there now, girl. The ones who they talked about in high school, the ones who they cheated on when they were in the military, the ones who they ignored in college. Now that they've been ran through in high school, college, and while you were in the military, and you don't want them, but they want to desperately pay $800 so they could just wait for the meet and greet event so they can meet you and greet you. Oh, yeah, these ladies are taking that L. They're, and they're willing to pay for that L. The passport bros are flying out, so, hey, we got to take whatever brothers we can get. And we're going to look at that. The, st the stats in regards to that match. We're going to look at that. That uh, I mean, Mark, we're going to look at that. Uh, uh, that the stats of why women are doing this right now, because there's a why behind it. Why they're heading to all these conventions that are blackmail this, the black man convention of that 100 black men, the NAACP dinners, anything that has to do with where a group of black men are going to be. These sisters are willing to come out that money to do it. And they're telling each other on TikTok, Amos, they're telling each other, KD, on TikTok to go on out there and do this. It's crazy. 
He said, I feel repulsed by these, these hunter hyenas. I'm telling you, brother. I'm telling you. It's a real thing. Now, ain't this something? The men that these women used to call lame yep. cornballs are now in, and they are the men that these women are chasing now? Message is specifically for black men and black women who are interested in dating other black men and black women. Listen to me. I just did a talk at the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals. Let me tell you something. This is the new dating strategy, all right? I need you to look up professional organizations black professional organizations. I need you to look up their annual and national conventions and I need you to just show up. Show up. You see how she just said that? She said, I need you to book your tickets to any black national events. Google it. Look it up. Because that's where all the good brothers are. They've been, these good brothers been so focused on making their money. And building their career, getting their certifications with gentlemen like Theo. And now they've got six figure careers. Girl, you better get to these conventions. But it's $800 a ticket for a husband for life. That's a good investment. And there were a good amount of people that I met at the parties, events, things like that, that also decided to come in from out of town to visit their bros or their girls, the homies, etc because they had friends who lived in Austin and wanted to have a good time because might as well. That brings me to the topic or conversation of people's motives for attending, more specifically the whole finding a man at the conference rhetoric that's going around right now. Personally, I think the narrative is being blown out of proportion because we are just like constantly online and that's what's being pushed out there. I've even seen some takes kind of shaming or judging or at least expressing disagreement with the idea of paying $800 to attend a conference because like, uh, you could, that's desperate or you could do that in your city, et cetera, et cetera. Some things I will say is I highly doubt that they're paying for the conference. I highly doubt that they're attending the conference. They're probably going to the functions and the unofficial parties that are happening in Austin that weekend because there are plenty. And when I say there are plenty, I mean there was literally a spreadsheet that had 108 rows of events that were happening over the course of the five day conference. And even then you may be thinking, well, well still, like why go to town for a conference for just the social events? And I would say people want to have a good time. And that's exactly what they're doing right now, Travis. Travis. That's exactly what they're doing. They're looking at if they go ahead and kick out that $800, they'll make that money back. They'll flip that money. They will flip that money. They sit back, listen, I put that $800 on this ticket, you know, including hotel room, including flight. So they're probably coming out of about good two, three thousand dollars. Well, I say two thousand dollars. Just so they can get to you guys. That's why I keep trying to tell you guys when they sit back and say, we the prize, really? We, we, we Black women are the prize. We the queen, really? Really? I, ain't, I can't remember the last time black men spent $800 a ticket to get to no sisters. Maybe $800 to get a flight to get to some sisters in Brazil or get to some sisters in Africa or get to some sisters in Cambodia or try to get, they got some bad sisters in Cambodia, bro. I'm telling y'all for real. We might have to pull that up and let you guys see them sisters in Cambodia in a second. But there are sisters in South America that they'll fly for $800 to, but I ain't never seen none of us fly $800, come out of $800 for to fly and see a bunch of sisters from one side of the country to the other, that don't work for us. Now, we do know there's a couple simps out there that be flying women out in the States. It ain't tricking if you got it, Dre. Yes, it's tricking, bro. Tricking is tricking. If you got $2 or 200000 it's tricking. But these sisters are desperate times. Desperate times calls for what? Desperate measures. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. Let's get back to the video. Let's check this. Get back to this video, man. Let me let y'all rock with this. Now, this woman says she was a speaker at a convention. And she's letting sisters know, I'm going to bring that beat back, bring her back a little bit. And she said, I'm letting y'all know, I'm giving y'all the hook. I'm giving y'all the game. Get to where these black men are. Black women. 
listen to me. I just did a talk at the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals. And let me tell you something. This is the new dating strategy, all right? I need you to look up professional organizations, black professional organizations. I need you to look up their annual and national conventions, and I need you to just show up. Show up. And don't even, I don't want to hear you talk about, ooh, ooh, that's being thirsty. You over here in a drought, and then you got the nerve to ask if it's bubbly or still. Shut up. All right? Show up. I'm recording this during Afrotech weekend. And if you're not aware, Afrotech is this big conference put on by Blavity that gets together a lot of Black people in tech um, on paper for job opportunities and career growth. But what I have heard from a lot of the people that I know going to Afrotech is that they are going to Afrotech looking for a relationship. Come with me to Afrotech. Y'all already lost my voice, so that's how you know Afrotech's winning. So I just got dressed, then headed on to the convention center. So then I got registered and checked out some booths at the expo hall and got some nice swag items. Then I took this really nice headshot. After that, we went to this after party by Google. It was a really nice event, and y'all, they were playing the tunes. I got shoulders, chest, pants, shoe. The DJ was really on her ones and twos. Then I got some food from this food truck. It was so good. But after that, I headed back to my hotel because I still got assignments due at 1159. <laughs> and I had to go right back outside because there's so many events going on at the same time during Avatech. But this is what I ended up wearing. Just something simple and cute. Then we headed on out. And this is the first spot we went to. This was the first floor. It was pretty chill. But then we went to the third floor. That's where the vibes was at. So we just stayed here all night and party the night away. But I have to come on here and say that like, I am so sad for the girlies that it's come to this. I wanna be very clear with what I'm saying. And that's not that I'm saying that you shouldn't go anywhere being open to a relationship or whatever. But what I'm starting to see is this like over strategizing and over taking in all this content on like how to get a man, where to go to get a man, what to do to get this type of man. And it's becoming ridiculous. Like so many of my dinner conversations are about relationships. So many like Sprinkle Sprinkle has been interwoven into my day to day life from TikTok, which mostly is a joke and like it's fine, but it's starting to not feel like a joke. And it's starting to feel like a serious situation that I'm concerned about. This is not to say that I don't understand the struggles of women, especially of Black women, who have everything that they're supposed to have on paper, but are still looking for a partner. But something that I've really internalized, especially this year, is that if you want to be the feminine in the relationship, you cannot strategize yourself into having a partner. Of the women around or above my age in happy relationships, Sure, like if you just got lucky, met their high school or college sweetheart, and just they were the one. No, ma'am, that wasn't luck that they had. They did things the correct way. They met that man in high school and college, and they stuck by his side. They did not divorce him or leave him. They stayed with their man. But the ones that have found these people around this age and are doing well and thriving in their relationships have one thing in common. And that's that they weren't focused on getting a relationship. They instead spent time getting clear on what they wanted out of life and what it looked like. And the person who was aligned with their vision that they took the time to define for themselves came into their life. I'm not gonna say they weren't intentional about like where they spent their time, but they weren't doing these things that are just like borderline weird. And I have to tell you guys, the guys know, the men know when you're doing this stuff. They know when you're going to these tech or real estate or investment banking networking events and trying to date them. And they are grossed out by it. I'm grossed out by it. But the conversations that I've had with my high value male friends are also very grossed out by it because it emits this energy of like desperation. I just want you to know when I do find my husband eventually, okay, because it's gonna happen. Maybe he's at Evertech, maybe not. But you know, okay, so the reason why I think he's at Afrotech is because I talked to a psychic a couple months ago and she was saying she that said she I would find psychic. my husband, or she didn't say husband, she said person, but I'm gonna find my husband through work, like at like a work event or something. And I'm like, well, I don't have work events, so it must be a conference. And I know my husband is black, so it has to be black conference Afrotech. <laughs> you see what I mean? So anyways, when I do find my husband, I'm gonna be so obnoxious. I'm gonna be so obnoxious. I'm gonna be like, 
you see what happens when you like wait and you're like intentional about dating meanwhile y'all been watching me swipe on tinder for the past two years anyways do as i say not as i do was afrotech worth it well i guess it depends on why you went as a former tech girly, I've considered getting back into tech. And as a beauty content creator, I figured it would be a great opportunity to meet a lot of great women and men. I've heard some people talk about the positives and negatives of women going there to meet their husbands. And I honestly feel that if you go to an event with the open mind of just meeting people who are like-minded, then you'll just have a positive experience. So you see they had the little picnic and the little gathering together. And, you know, the ladies are looking all cute for you guys and everything. Shout out to my man, Black Scorpion, in the building for the $5 cash app. Shout out to you, brother. All the things that they're doing. Travis, you see that they're coming for you, baby. He said, it happened to me a few... Travis said, pause. Let's pause this out. Let's move this out of the way. Travis said, hey, it happened to me a few years ago. He said, a black engineering event, which is the NSBE and and the cyber conference uh uh recently no bueno no thank you <laughs> he said okay he say ladies can't you see can't you see i got a passport i got a passport hey i got a passport i got a passport oh he say listen he say i'm sorry ladies i'm out of here <laughs> shout out to you <laughs> He said it just happened to him recently. He said Dre ain't lying. The truth must be told. Goodness gracious. They are out there, man. They are out there. He said, what's the girl uh, joking about? Uh, the psychic serious question? Hey, bro. I don't even know what she's talking about. She said that she went to a psychic and the psychic told her that she would meet her man at a business event. She said, well, I kind of figured my man since he black because I only like black men and he a man. So I only like men. She said, so it's a black man at a business event. It must be Afrotech. Man, they about to turn Afrotech into the next freak Nick. They about to turn Afrotech into the next freak Nick. I know a lot of y'all about to be heading down to Afrotech. <laughs> the, the next convention after y'all leave the black man is very conclave. <laughs> Y'all going down there. Shout out to my man Travis for the 499. <laughs> Appreciate you, brothers. <laughs> Goodness gracious, man. Goodness gracious. Desperate times calls for one thing, gentlemen. Desperate measures.